Hello, I'm Bernie Graham, and we're at the Golden Valley, Minnesota Application Lab. And today we're going to replace a defective igniter on a furnace. And we're going to be using the Glowfly Universal uh, Igniter, which is a silicon nitride igniter, and it's much more robust than the silicon carbide version. So, um, one of the things we wanted to emphasize is that this is for a trained, experienced technician and everyone should be uh, consulting the installation instructions that comes in the package. So first of all, we're going to uh, pull off the cover and we're going to look at what we're going to do here today. So we want to verify that the igniter is in fact defective and the igniter sits down in the right hand corner of this particular furnace and uh, on the opposite end is a uh, a flame rod and this installation is for only those uh, furnaces that have uh, a separate flame sense uh, flame rod so uh, make sure that uh, you check the installation the uh, schematic to verify that your furnace is appropriate for this installation first thing I'm going to do is turn up uh, a call for heat so I'm going to go around the corner and raise the temp on the thermostat Okay, I've uh, raised the temp on the thermostat. We've got a call for heat going. The uh, inducer is uh, running and the furnace is going through uh, a light off sequence, but the igniter is not operating. It's, it's, uh, at this point, it certainly appears to be defective. So we're going to verify uh, with a voltmeter that we've got voltage to the igniter uh, before we replace it, and that should be the last step then before we're ready to, uh, to do the replacement. So we expect to see 120 volts here at this terminal, and uh, I'm going to disconnect the, uh, uh, the connector. And right now I've got 120 volts presence. It just turned off as it went through the sequence. And uh, that tells me uh, that the igniter is defective delivering power to it and it's just not working so I'm going to now get ready to replace it so we've got two important things to do we're gonna turn off the gas and turn off the power and as an additional step we'll turn off the call for heat to uh, make sure that uh, we don't go through another ignition sequence while we're trying to light while we're trying to work we're gonna turn off the gas and turn off the power here. By code, all your furnaces will uh, be required to have these quite convenient to the uh, furnace itself. It shouldn't be all over on the other side of the room. So these are quick and easy. And now I'm going to go around the corner and just turn off the call for heat. Well, we've troubleshot the part. We know it's defective, and now we're going to remove it and go about the replacement procedure. So, first of all, I'm going to disconnect the wires. And I've got a nut driver. I'll loosen up the part. And this is the defective igniter. And we'll uh, get our new one and go about uh, identifying which bracket to use. Now our Glowfly replaces 110 different igniters, so we've got we're going to have a half a dozen brackets inside. Each one is marked, and uh, we've got some uh, pictures to uh, line up our old igniter to help determine what new bracket to use. What we do is take our uh, defective igniter. And we will find uh, an illustration that is, matches it. And you just lay it down. Now, of course, the ends of mine broke off, but that doesn't really matter. The key thing here is the ceramic section. And I've got a match. And it tells me to use bracket A. And uh, I've got a snap off one of these tabs and it's telling me to snap off tab one. So that's what we're going to do now. 
Very easy to do with a couple of pliers. Just hold the main section and we're going to uh, grab the uh, side to break off and just give it a quick snap and we'll be ready to go. Okay, now that we've got our brackets set, we're going to uh, mount the igniter and then we'll be ready to uh, install it in the furnace. So the igniter is fragile and uh, you want to be careful with that. And we're going to mount it inside and we'll put our uh, screw in here, screw it down together and we'll be set to mount it on the furnace. Now we've got a thread forming screw that's going to hold the igniter in place and uh, the first time you put it in it's going to be a little tough. So we'll do that, try to make life a little easier and do it before we, uh, we get the, uh, the igniter here and we don't have to fool with that. So I'm going to cut the threads the first time we do this and we'll back it out and now we'll put the igniter in place and secure it. There, got the igniter mounted on the bracket and now we're going to put that assembly on the furnace. It'll go in just like the other one was positioned. So I've got the wires up and routed. And the next thing we're going to do is snip off this connector, strip the ends of the wires, and we'll use wire nuts to connect uh, the igniter to the furnace harness. Now we need to cut out the uh, original harness and we're going to replace that with wire nuts. So we'll just take the ends, cut that out, and you can throw this old connector away now. We're not going to reuse it. So we're going to use wire nuts to connect our igniter to the uh, furnace harness. So I'm going to strip the ends of this uh, harness and we'll get ready for the wire nuts. So we've included the wire nuts in our uh, assembly bag. And we'll put them on. It the, uh, doesn't matter which side goes to where. Those in snug. We'll put on our last wire nut. Screw this in tight. And now we're going to verify the, the wires are routed away from the open flame and any heat and just make sure they're not drooping down. Uh, the igniter has got uh, the wires have insulation that's specially designed for uh, heat resistance. We want to make sure that we have it as far away as we can from any, any open flame. Now we want to verify the igniter is uh, wired properly and will work. And we're going to do that without turning on the gas. This way we can go through the ignition sequence, verify its operation. And when we're happy with that, then we'll uh, come back and turn the gas on. So I'm going to turn the power on first. And now we're going to set the temperature above room temperature to initiate a call for heat. All right, our inducer fan is spinning and uh, our igniter is glowing red hot. So then we'll go through the whole sequence again. And this time we can expect uh, the furnace to light off. Okay, now we're going to turn the gas back on and turn our power on. I'm going to go around the corner and uh, turn on the thermostat and we'll come back and watch a full sequence. 
All right, our igniter is glowing again. This time we're gonna have gas flow and we should have a successful light off. Okay, we didn't light off and so I'm gonna have to adjust that bracket a little bit so it's more directly in the uh, gas flow. So uh, I'm gonna turn off the power and turn off the gas and I will readjust. I'm gonna give it a second to cool off and then I'm gonna readjust the bracket uh, so it's more optimum pos position. Turn off the gas. I've let the igniter cool off. Now I'm gonna just loosen the bracket a little bit and swing the igniter more directly into the gas flow so that we uh, increase the likelihood of igniting. Okay, we'll turn the gas and power back on and we'll run through another ignition sequence. And I'm going to disappear around the corner and turn on our thermostat. Okay, our igniter is glowing again. We're going through a sequence and uh, pretty soon the gas will come on and we'll watch for the light off. And we have a light off in the new position. So this is really important that we verify this after we do the adjustment to make sure that we're lighting properly. And I'm going to uh, turn this off again uh, and do this two more times so I'm very sure that we're lighting consistently. So I'm going to turn off the call for heat and go through this process again. Okay, we did a second light off and this is the third and final time we'll verify that everything is working properly. And our igniter is glowing at this point and the gas will turn on very shortly. All right, we've got a good light off and now we're going to put the door back on and I can uh, go over and set the, the thermostat to the normal room temperature for the customer.